everyone, it's Alice and today I am gonna bake some bread and recommend you some books. And that's kind of it. So I asked you on Instagram if any of you had any very specific book recommendation requests and I got loads actually, like way more than I had anticipated. And so we're just gonna go through as many of them as we can while I bake some bread because Bread is wonderful. I will admit there's not gonna be that much like actual baking in this video because I made a type of dough that needs to rise for like eight hours. <laughs> and so I made the dough last night and today I'm basically just gonna shape it and then it needs to rise a little bit more and then we're gonna put it in the oven. The dough that I've made is a type of sourdough and you know, you can't go wrong with sourdough bread. It's really, really good. And I'm not gonna be doing anything fancy to it, it's just, you know, bread. Now I made note of the different recommendation requests that I got, obviously, and I've made some notes for books that I think would fit each request, obviously, that's how this works. And for some of them I have multiple books and sometimes I only have one, and we're just gonna do as many of them as we can within the time it takes me to make this bread. Now the first request that I got was a book set in Norway or Scandinavia that's not a thriller or a crime book, which honestly was more challenging than I thought it was going to be because Norwegians love their crime fiction. It's probably like the biggest like genre in Norway. I feel like 70% of the books that come out in Norwegian are like crime books or thrillers. I did think of two books for that though. I would recommend The Wild Horses by Maya Lunde, which is like a relatively new release in English. It came out in Norwegian a couple of years ago, I think. I got like a, an early copy of it, and so I don't remember when it came out in Norway. But that's really good, although it's not set all in Norway, only a part of it is. It's one of those books where one perspective is set in the past, one more in the present, and one in the future. And the future perspective is set in Norway, in this little, like, town. The second book that I would recommend is The Ice Palace by Tarja Vesos, which is actually a Norwegian classic that's... It has been a while since I read it, but when I did read it, I remember it being really good. The second recommendation request that I got is maybe the one that was the most difficult. It's a book that gives you Call Me By Your Name vibes. Now, Call Me By Your Name is like its own singular thing. It's very, very difficult to find anything similar to it, in my opinion. I don't read a whole lot of romance. Romance isn't like my favorite genre. But even I love that book and it's beautifully written and it's a story about two men who just love each other and it's really intense and the whole feeling of that book, I don't know if I've ever really read anything similar to that, but the closest I have gotten is actually The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. And although that's more of like, it's historical fiction, it's set like in the age of heroes and there's like, Achilles is one of the main characters in it. It is similar in the way that it's a story about two men who love each other and it's beautifully written. Like the writing style, I don't know if I would say it's the same, but like it's at the same level of beauty in my opinion. Like both of those books are beautifully written and they gave me some of the same like feeling. All right, so I've shaped my bread, which was not very difficult at all, and I'm gonna transfer it over here and it's gonna rise for another like half an hour, 45 minutes, and then we're gonna bake it. And you know, this is the easy part of baking because I basically already made the dough, so all of this is very easy and not very interesting probably, but at the end we will have bread which is great. So I'm gonna let it rise on the lid of the bowl that I used because what I do is, I'm talking like I make bread all the time, I don't really, but I put like the part where I made the dough on top of this so it's in like a lid and then I put it in a warm place and then once this is risen, we're gonna transfer it to this like cast iron thing and I'm gonna bake the bread in this. I don't know why, I just like baking bread 
in that. For some reason, I feel like it just works better. And I'm lucky enough to have one of these things. They're so freaking expensive. But I got this on a sale and it's like one of the best things that I've ever bought. And so it's perfect to make bread in. So if you have like a cast iron thing, I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but you know what this is. If you have one of these, you should try to make bread in it because it's great. I also might try to like cut the bread before I put it in the oven. Usually I don't. I think it's called like scoring the dough. Usually I don't do that because I don't have anything. Like you need a razor blade for it and I don't have any loose razor blades. But I'm gonna try to use scissors and see if it works. If it doesn't, it's fine because it's still bread and it tastes the same, but we'll see. But I'm gonna do that after it's risen again. I don't know if anyone else does this or if it's like a weird thing, but whenever I make like bread or buns or any like sort of thing that needs to rise, I put the dough in my bathroom I think it's just because like I was taught that when I was a kid to like put it in a bathroom or somewhere where like there's a lot of heating and my bathroom is the warmest place in my apartment and so I always just put it in there and I feel like it's I feel like it works, although I don't know if it actually does or if it's just something that I'm imagining. Anyways, I'm gonna leave the dough alone in my bathroom for a little while and then in a little bit we'll put on the oven and I'm also gonna put this in the oven because this needs to be hot when you place the dough in it, which is why I put the dough on like a baking sheet so I can just like lift the sheet and put it in here. I've done it before and it works well and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm sure I'm like over explaining it for people who make bread all the time, but if you don't, you know, that's a tip for you. That's what I do. The next recommendation request though is a great one. It's a book that is way too underrated and or not spoken about enough. I love watching like underrated books videos on booktube. It's some of my favorite videos. I think it's it's a great way to discover books that are not spoken about a lot. And I can think of two books for this that I love and that I feel like everyone should read and everyone should talk about. The first one is one that I mention anytime anyone asks me for an underrated book. It's Sometimes a River Song by Avril Joy. This is a book that is like historical fiction. It's set in 1930s Arkansas and it's about this girl who lives in a riverboat community and all she wants is to learn how to read. And it's such a beautiful book. It is written in a really interesting way. It's written in dialect, which I feel like anyone can read if you just like get into it. And it's published by an independent press and maybe that's why it's not so popular, but like I honestly feel like that book is on the same level as the book Where the Crawdads Sing. Like if, if Sometimes a River Song had gotten that kind of like marketing, I think it would have done as well because the stories are kind of similar. It has a lot of similar themes and both of them are beautiful. And I just think it's such a shame that Sometimes a River Song doesn't get more hype because People would love it, I'm sure of it. I do maybe sometimes think, and maybe I'm insane, but when I'm like looking up books, I will always look up what the book looks like. And sometimes, I'm sorry to say, if the cover is like really ugly, I will like not get the book because, you know, books are expensive and if it's not like a cool edition, I might not be as inclined to like pick it up I know we're not supposed to judge books by their covers, but that's kind of what it's like. And I think if the book, Sometimes a River Song, got an updated and like cooler type of cover, I think it would maybe do better. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like reasons why it doesn't do, why it's not like super popular when it should be because it's really, really good. I would really recommend it despite it not being like the prettiest edition. The inside is worth all of it. It's beautiful. The second book that I thought of does have a beautiful cover and to be honest, I don't know why it's not everywhere, <laughs> but it's This Green and Pleasant Land by Aisha Malik. This is 
one of my favorite books really the more i talk about it the more i realize how much i love that book it's set in the small town in england and it's about this guy who loses his mother and her dying wish is that he is to build a mosque in this little village and that causes all kinds of problems but it's beautifully written it's relatively easy to read like it's easy to get into and it's the kind of book that i think almost anyone who likes like literary fiction or general fiction would love and i think it should be super super popular but i don't ever hear anyone talking about it i don't know if it's maybe more popular in england but like on the internet i've only ever heard of one other person talking about it and that's where i got the recommendation from and yeah it should just be so much more hype then someone asks for something that is gripping has short chapters that's not a thriller but it has a deep topic honestly this is very very difficult also because I do not have the best like memory when it comes to books I don't always remember if like the chapters are long or short so I might be like missing parts of this and I'm sorry if if I am but I thought of two books for this I thought of Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson it is a nonfiction book but it's like super easy to read and I find space to be quite a gripping and deep topic and it's like a funny book and really engaging and I think it's the kind of book that sort of pulls you in and it is quite a short book so I don't imagine the chapters are that long. <laughs> the second book that I thought of I just sort of threw in here because I think that if you don't want to read a nonfiction book and you're not interested in space the other recommendation is maybe not that great but this recommendation I'm not sure if it has short chapters I don't remember but I remember the book being really gripping and it has a lot of interesting and deep themes in it. It's The Book of the Unnamed Midwife by Meg Ellison. This is a dystopian novel that I actually also feel like is kind of underrated. I should have put this in the underrated one as well. But this is a story set in the future where we follow this woman who might be the last midwife left on earth. And a plague has like ravaged the world and almost everyone has died but the plague has killed more women than men and so there are a lot of men and not a lot of women so women are really scarce and you know women are not treated great in our current world and in this world they're certainly not treated great and the story is about them surviving and there are also no children in this world and so we follow this woman as she like tries to navigate this world and the people she comes into there's a lot of like really crazy stuff happening in that book it's dark and gritty but it is very gripping and it has a lot of interesting discussions in it when it comes to women it is quite a dark book though i will say and it is like you get a very desolate feeling from it so if you want like a fun book that's not like super fun but there's one scene in particular from that book that has really stuck with me this midwife that we're following she comes into contact with a man and a woman who like get together and they're trying to have a kid i think i don't remember but this midwife feels like the woman is not being treated very well and so she asks if she wants to like come with her and go somewhere else and the woman wants to stay with this man and then we find out that she stays there and the couple who are not like super old they never see another person for the rest of their lives but, like they don't come into contact with anyone else after the midwife leaves because everyone like almost literally everyone are just gone maybe i'm making that book sound like super depressing and so you don't want to read it but trust me it's definitely definitely worth it it's really really good it's actually perfect if you like books or like shows like the handmaid's tale it's sort of in that kind of vein i guess the next recommendation request we got though might be my favorite it just says jungle setting I love jungles as settings for books. I don't feel like I've actually read that many books 
with that kind of setting but it is one of those things that I absolutely love and so I have two recommendations I have one fiction and one non-fiction both of which are very intriguing very gripping and super interesting the fiction recommendation is of course the smoke hunter by Jacqueline Benson which is one of those books that I just love and I think that if you want a break from the world and you just want something fun and entertaining and light this is absolutely perfect. I feel like I've spoken about this book so much but the story is about this archaeologist who is a woman in 1898 I think and she steals a map and she heads into the jungle to find this thing that the map leads to and then someone's chasing her and it's a whole thing but most of the book is set in the jungle and it's really like atmospheric and just so so much fun the second recommendation the non-fiction one is the lost city of said by david gran which is a book all about the explorer percy fawcett i think his name is it's been a while since i read that book but it's all about him and his expedition into the jungle in the 1920s and he went in search of the lost city of Zed, also known as El Dorado. And in current day, David Grant is trying to figure out what happened to him because he went into the jungle and disappeared and no one knows what happened to him. And so the book sort of, it's sort of about David Grant trying to go on the same expedition as this guy did, but it's also just trying to look at the historical facts that we do have about this guy and what his plans were and things like that and it just explores this mystery but there is also quite a lot of stuff about the jungle and a lot of it is set in the jungle and it's really really good if any of you have any recommendations for books that has a jungle setting i would actually love to know whether it's fiction or non-fiction i don't care but i would love to read more jungle books now that I think about it, I guess maybe The Jungle Book is a good recommendation, but I actually haven't read that book. I may have read it when I was a kid, but I haven't read it in like at least 20 years. Next, someone requests an insane book, <laughs> which I feel like is sort of up for interpretation. And so I have three recommendations for this one, depending on what kind of insanity you're looking for. So I've noted down The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, which is arguably one of the most complicated and insane books that I've ever read, but it's also so much fun. I often refer to that book as a roller coaster, and that's really what it feels like. It's basically a murder mystery set in a time loop, but then there's also just so much other stuff going on, and there are like creature it's very hard to explain but it's so so good kind of complicated but once you get into it it's great and it is arguably pretty insane <laughs> if you want a different type of insanity though i would recommend 1984 by george orwell which is a classic that i'm sure you've heard of but that world is pretty insane and it's like scary in the way that it's you could see how that would happen in real life and there are a lot of concepts in that book that are like real life concepts and i just love that book so much i think it's a life changing read and i wish everyone would read it i think there are a lot of things in that book that everyone should understand and it makes you sort of like a better person i think when you know that these things can happen and it doesn't just happen in fiction and it's a very it's just a very good book it is a little bit of like a i understand why some people struggle with it but i feel like it's worth getting through if you don't want to read that either though i have a science fiction recommendation i have ubik by philip k dick which I do not at all know how to explain to you. Just look it up and see. I don't know if it'll, like the blurb might not <laughs> give you anything, but that is truly an insane book. I feel like I still don't really get it, but it's, it's crazy. And actually when I read it, I tried to look up if there were any adaptations of it. And the book is so crazy that no one knows how to adapt it to film. And I don't think you could really maybe i don't see that happening but it's like yeah it's 
pretty insane. It's from the same author who wrote um, Blade Runner, although the book is not called Blade Runner. It's called something else, but Blade Runner is an adaptation of one of his other books, and yeah, Ubik is pretty crazy. Then someone requests a book that can emotionally scar me. And this made me chuckle because this is one of those things where if you like reading, you think of that as like a compliment. Like a book that really emotionally messed you up is like a great book. And it's one of those things where you'll read a book that really messes you up and you'll tell other people that they need to read it, even though that is kind of like weird. <laughs> I've actually written down four books for this one because I feel like different things scar different people. Like we all have different like triggers and different things that like really hit us. So I've jotted down four very different books and you can just pick one. The first one is Mouse by Art Spiegelman. This is a graphic novel about a man and his father and his father is a Holocaust survivor. And it's a pretty jarring book. It's very heartbreaking and it's a book that's really stuck with me, at least. And it's, it is one of those books that I would recommend to other people and be like, this is gonna mess you up. Enjoy. <laughs> if you want something a little bit different though, you can read Know My Name by Chanel Miller, which is a memoir. And if you've heard of this case, you'll know why it would emotionally scar you. This book is really well written though. It's extremely emotional and quite, hard to read, but it's very, very good. Again, it's a book that has really stuck with me and there are a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in there, like you look into it before you read it in case you're sensitive to things, but it's a very, very good book. Heartbreaking, but really good. If you want a fiction book though, I would recommend When I Hit You by Mina Kondosami. It's been a while since I read that book as well. I think it was on the Women's Prize for Fiction long list or something. Like, that's where I found it. And to be honest, I don't remember the synopsis. I only remember the feeling it left me. And I had to, like, take a break from reading after reading that book. I remember some scenes from it, but I don't want to tell you about it because it'll spoil the book. But it's basically a story about a woman who's in an abusive relationship. And... Again, the way it's written just like stabs you right in the heart, but in the best way. <laughs> the last one though, is if you want to be emotionally scarred and have to carry that with you for the rest of your life. Like if you want something that will absolutely, excuse my language, fuck you up, this is the book to read. It's The Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells. This is a book about climate change and it takes a look at best and worst case scenarios when it comes to the climate and our world and the best case scenario is gonna make you want to cry so if you really want to get like messed up feel free to read this book honestly i don't know if i really recommend it because i still think about that book like when i finished that book i honestly like couldn't sleep for days because it just left me so incredibly worried and there's no like there's no hope in this book it's all bad and I know that that's what the situation is, but my god, that book is horribly depressing and will definitely, definitely mess you up. <laughs> it's time to put on the oven now though. The dough has risen for like half its second rise time. And so I'm gonna put this in the oven and then in maybe like a while, we'll have some bread. I always get really impatient towards the end when I'm baking something where I just wanna like I just want it to be done, but I know that letting the dough rise is like super important because I've done that before and not let it rise and the result is not great. So we gotta wait a little bit longer, but that means that you get more recommendations, which I guess is good for you. <laughs> I'm just really desperate for this bread to be done because I can't wait to eat it. There's nothing like freshly baked bread. It's so good. And I'm gonna eat like all of it in one go. I can't wait. Anyways. <laughs> Next, someone writes, recommend me a book that is so bloody and disturbing it makes you want to unread it. Now this, it's kind of like hard to recommend books that you would want to unread. I don't really want to unread anything except honestly, maybe The Uninhabitable Earth. I guess that's a really good one. It is, 
arguably bloody in a way <laughs> and it's very very depressing and there is a pretty big part of me that wishes that I didn't read that book and also that I DNF'd it because I hated reading it but I also found it fascinating and I thought like when I was reading it that I don't want to read this I don't know if I can take this and then I just kept reading I feel like it's one of those things where if you see a train crash, you can't look away. It's that kind of book, but it really, it does kind of, yeah, it really messed me up. I kind of wish I didn't read it. <laughs> For other types of books though, I'm assuming this person wants something like horror-ish. And to be honest, I don't read that much horror and I don't read that much like bloody, really horrible stuff. So I don't want to unread any of these books, but I think that they're pretty bloody and disturbing and the first one I've written down is Perfume by Patrick Suskind. Absolutely disgusting book, like I don't even know how to explain it, but it's about this guy in historical France who's born with an amazing sense of smell and all of the smells are described to you and all of that is like super disturbing. You can imagine like historical France in a city, what that smells like. Not great, but it's such a good book. It's horrible but also great. I also thought of Misery by Stephen King for this one. It's not like super bloody but I thought of that like one scene where if you've read the book you know what I'm talking about that one like really horrible scene towards the end. That's super bloody and overall it is a pretty disturbing book. I think it's really good but pretty disturbing like the woman in that story is for sure really disturbed. I also thought of Through the Woods by Emily Carroll, which is a graphic novel where the only colors that are used are black, white, and red. So you can imagine what the red color is mostly used for. It's like a short story collection, but it's illustrated obviously because it's a graphic novel and all of those stories are pretty disturbing. It's one of those books that's perfect for when you want something like spooky for like fall. Then I also just want to mention, and I do realize that I'm like recommending a lot of books per like request, but I hope you're okay with it. I would recommend You Should Have Left by Daniel Kelman. That book is not bloody, but it's very, very disturbing. It's also quite short. It's like a short novella type book about this guy in the German mountains who brings his family to this really creepy house. And the house and the whole situation is absolutely super, super disturbing, but it's very, very good. Again, kind of an underrated book. I don't hear anyone talking about that book either, but it's really good. Then someone asks for a book where you'd wish you were actually friends with its characters in real life. And to be honest, I found this surprisingly difficult. There are some characters where I'm like, ooh, it would be cool to meet them but I don't know if I, I'd want to be like actually friends with them. And the one that popped into my head was actually Pumpkinheads by Rainbow Rowell. And I think the reason is that that book is about two friends who work at this like uh, Halloween fair or like fall fair. I'm pretty sure it's Halloween related. I don't remember. There are a lot of like fall colors and pumpkins in that book. And I think that I would just like to be in that like autumn world and the girl in that friendship is like super food driven and all she does <laughs> is like go around this like place and eat everything and I would love to be friends with her because I also love food and I just think you know I think we would be really good friends and we could just go everywhere and eat everything together. Then we have a request for some more Norwegian books it says a famous Norwegian book that has an English translation. I actually get like questions about this quite a lot and I do want to mention that I have like a pretty old video about like Nordic or Scandinavian books available in English that I will try to remember to leave a link to somewhere that you can check out if you want more recommendations but I'm gonna mention two books here and both of them are by famous Norwegian authors. The first one is The Snowman by Jul Nespe. Jul Nespe is arguably like maybe Norway's most famous author and he writes 
crime books. And this is a part of his Hari Hula series, but you can read it as a standalone. And in my opinion, I haven't read all of the books in that series, but this is, of the ones that I've read, by far the best one. It's such a good mystery. It's really creepy, and just the whole story is really, really good. The second book is The History of Bees by Maya Lunda. This is a book that has done really well throughout the world. I know there are loads of different translations of it, and it's the first book in her Climate Quartet series. The other book that I mentioned by her earlier, The Last Wild Horses, is the third book in that series, and you can read any of the three books that are out so far. Her fourth one hasn't come out yet. She's writing it, and she... <laughs> Like, all of the books in that series deal with, like, different types of, like, climate crisis things, and The History of Bees deals with bees. And the last book is supposed to deal with a pandemic, and she started writing it, like, right before the pandemic broke out, and I don't think she's written that much of it yet, but the fourth one will be out at some point, and I would recommend any of the three. They're really, really good, and Maya Lunde is a very famous Norwegian author. Next, someone requests a book about friendship, and I love this one. I love books about friends. I just think, honestly, sometimes I find them a little bit difficult to find. Like, it's sometimes hard to find certain types of books that don't have, like, a romantic plot line, and I prefer books that are just about, like, friends or just other things. But I have read some really good ones, so I want to recommend three of my favorites, because I can't just recommend one for whatever reason. The first one is Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. This is one of my favorite books that I read last year, and it's about two women in the 1950s who go on this expedition to the other side of the world. They're very, very different women, but somehow they, like, come together and they become really really good friends, I would say, and their story is just so heartwarming and it's really a very, very good story about just like female friendship and I feel like those books are kind of hard to find. The second book I have is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa, which is a book about unlikely friendship where we meet this math teacher who has suffered a traumatic brain injury and he can't retain memories for longer than 80 minutes. And it's all about his friendship with this woman who comes to sort of take care of him and the house and also her son. It's all about how they form this friendship and it's just a really beautiful story. The last one is also a Japanese translation. It's Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukigawa. And this is about this guy who works in a dorayaki shop and one day this old woman comes to him and is like, I want to work here, but he doesn't really want to hire her, but then he does and they become friends and there's also this like student in the mix and it's all beautiful. I will say the three books that I've mentioned all have like slightly heartbreaking moments as well. I don't want to say what it is, but you know, they're heartwarming, but also there are some things that might make you cry. <laughs> then I got a request that really made me chuckle because Aphelia, it says, a book to scare men away from talking to me on the subway. <laughs> My best advice for this would actually to move to Norway because no one talks to you on public transport here. It's like a an unwritten law that you're not supposed to like talk to strangers and no one ever really bothers you except the like occasional like once or twice a year something weird might happen but yeah Norway is the place to live if you want to like not have people talk to you. <laughs> I do think that you could go several routes with this but my first instinct would be to read like a feminist type of book which I feel like can go both ways, because in one way, I think that it would sort of scare men away, but then there's also the kinds of people who want to, like, discuss it with you. When they see you read something like that, they're like, well, what do you mean? You know, so it can go both ways, but the two books that I've chosen are sort of, like, feminist books, I guess. We have Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez, I don't know if the cover would scare people away if you just like read 
the title, but the stuff in it might make you angry enough that your face would scare people away. It's all about data bias in our world and how <laughs> the world is basically made for men and not for women. And it's basically made for the default man. And there are like 12 of those and that's kind of it. And yeah, I think maybe if you got enough into it, you would be angry enough to scare everybody away. The second book is Women in Battle by Marta Brehm, which is a graphic novel all about strong, really cool warrior women. And I think that if anyone would talk to you when you're reading this, you would be like motivated enough by reading that book to just like shush them away. If you know what I mean? Like it would inspire you if you will. And I do feel like you're pretty <laughs> you're pretty dumb if you see someone reading a book called Women in Battle and you try to talk to them when they don't want you to talk to them. But you know, some people are really stupid, so I don't know. So it's time to put the dough in the oven and I'm going to make some like cuts in it. I'm pretty sure you call it scoring it. I don't know if that's really what I'm doing. It's just a sort of, if you don't do it, the bread just like breaks apart when it rises in the oven anyway. I'm not gonna do anything like decorative because I honestly don't really know how to do it. I'm just gonna do some cuts with some scissors and hope for the best. I gotta say the dough is looking a little bit flat, but I do feel like whenever I get to this point in making bread, I always think that, like I question my whole life <laughs> but then you get it into the oven and it's fine so yeah we're just gonna try and you know if it ends up not being great it's still bread so it is still great i don't really know if this is gonna do anything but we'll see i'm gonna put it in the pot that is in the oven now and then it needs to cook 20 minutes with the lid and then 10 minutes without so let's get it into the oven Getting the hot pot out of the oven to put the dough in is always like the scariest part for me. I feel like one day that's just gonna go like really, really wrong. But then I also feel like it would still be worth it because I assume I would get bread at the end, which makes everything worth it. Anyways, let's knock out some more recommendations while we wait for this bread. I gotta tell you, I feel like the greatest torture of my life is like waiting for food to be done or like waiting for food in general. That means I'm living a very privileged life, I am aware, and also it's not the it's not the worst part of my life. But I am in general, I think, quite a patient person when it comes to a lot, but not when it comes to food. Like there's something about food that makes me so incredibly impatient, even when I'm not like super hungry. I can still be like very very impatient with it which is not the greatest thing when you're baking but doing stuff like this is actually great because it means that i have something to do while i'm waiting so this actually works out great for me anyways the next request is something with characters so developed you start to fall for them now i don't know if this person means fall for them in the sense where some people like fall in love with fictional characters to be honest i don't have anything for that because I don't ever really feel that but I do have some recommendations with books with fantastic characters that you really start to care for I've written down three books but I do have a lot of them because characters are like my favorite things in books the first one I've written down is A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabel Allende this is the kind of book that follows the same characters throughout the whole course of their lives, which I feel like is perfect for when you really want to like end up caring about the characters. And they go through a lot and they're like displaced by war. They start off in Spain, they end up in France, and then eventually they make it to South America. And I feel like the characters in that book are just the types of characters that you really start to feel for. And they feel like real people, which is why you care about them so much. The second book is Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keane. I just feel like the characters in that book are so well developed. And again, we follow characters for like years and years and years of their lives. And we even follow like several generations. And I do feel like there are at least some 
characters in that book that you really start to like care very deeply about. Then I've written They Were Sisters by Dorothy Whipple, which is one of my favorite classics and it follows three sisters and I feel like you don't have a heart if you don't end up caring about the characters in that book because again you follow them for a really long time and you can't help but sympathize with all of them even if you don't always agree with them. Then we have got a very specific request. It's a book to get me through my post-graduation depression and make me feel like everything is okay. I feel like we all need those books sometimes to make us feel like everything is alright and I have two books for this that I feel like are very uplifting and sort of feel good. The first one is Sheets by Brenna Thumler. This is a graphic novel about a girl who makes friends with a ghost and it's just really sweet. There are some like heavier stuff in that book as well but it's overall a very like sweet and comforting story that I feel like it's gonna make you feel better. The second one is actually like a I guess you could call it a graphic novel but it's like a comic book strip type of book. It's very hard to explain. It's Strange Planet by Nathan W. Pyle and this is like a comic strip type thing where we follow these aliens who basically live like humans and they like Oh, it's so hard to explain. It's really good and really sweet. It's about these aliens going through all of these like human experiences and human emotions and it's really funny the way they talk about it and I feel like it's one of those books that make you feel like you're less alone in a way but it's also just like really sweet and also really funny. This guy also has an Instagram account where you can find several of these as well, which you can also check out if you don't want to get the book, but yeah, it's a really sweet book. I also think there's a strange planet too, but I don't have that yet, but yeah, that's such a sweet book. Also, again, I feel like kind of underrated, at least on booktube, it's not like a huge thing, but I feel like everyone should read that book. Then we have some more like comforting requests in a way. I feel like a lot of people need comforting books sometimes. It says, a book that gives me a new comfort character to obsess over. Again, I would recommend Sheets by Brenna Thumbler. I think that the little ghost in that, there are several ghosts in that, but like the main ghost is like super sweet and I think that he's sort of like a comforting character. He's just a very sweet little ghost creature so I would really recommend that and then also Sweet Bean Paste by Durin Tsukagawa again I feel like that book is comforting in a way and I feel like especially the older woman in that story is like very comforting and grandmotherly and she's just like very very sweet. The last one for this that I've got is a very short little book um <laughs> I feel like it's kind of a weird recommendation. If you've read the book, you'll realize why, but it's The Little Snake by A.L. Kennedy, and the comfort character is the little snake in it, which is a weird choice, maybe. But this snake becomes friends with this girl and follows her throughout her whole life, and I just feel like their friendship is really sweet. Again, it's a book about friendship in a way, but this snake is also like it represents something else. So maybe not super comforting, but also kind of comforting. I'm just talking in circles now. It's a really good book. I feel like that snake is like worth obsessing over. So we're in the final part now. I've taken the lid off of the pot and it just needs another like 10, 12 minutes and then it's done and then we're also done so I can go eat this bread. <laughs> the next recommendation request and by the way we're not gonna get through all of these and I'm just gonna save the rest for another video at some point maybe if you like this one I'll make another one and bake something else but the next request is literary fiction featuring a single woman in her 20s and 30s that does not have a romantic plot line and boy did I struggle with this one I honestly feel like this is something that I would request so if anyone else 
has any tips and recommendations, do let me know because I feel like these are very, very difficult to come by. And I've like noted down a couple, but some of them don't really fit to be honest because they have like some like romantic plot line, but it's like a side plot, which I feel like sometimes that's as good as it gets with these types of books. But I do have one that I feel like if I remember correctly, doesn't have a romantic plotline at all. It's Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. There is something about a guy in this book, but it's like completely irrelevant. And this is really all about this woman who has reached that point in her life where people are asking like, aren't you gonna get married? Aren't you gonna have kids? She's basically the same age that I am. And she like doesn't want any of it and so she tries to conform but then realizes that she is happy where she is and that's basically the whole story. <laughs> the other ones that I've noted down do kind of have like some stuff in them but I feel like the main portion of the story is really about a woman in her 20s and 30s trying to figure out life. I wrote down Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman. It's been a while since I read this book, so I <laughs> feel a little bit like apprehensive recommending it because I don't remember if it has a romantic plot line, but I feel like it kind of doesn't. I feel like it's just like a friendship thing, but the book is really good and it's mostly just about this woman who is struggling quite a lot trying to figure out her life. I also do feel like if you want a good book about a woman in her 20s and 30s that is like such a good read, it's Queenie by Candace Carty Williams. There is some like stuff in there about men but it's not the main story. The main story is about again Queenie trying to figure out her life and I feel like this is one is like kind of because I'm pretty sure in the beginning of the book she gets out of her relationship and she's like obsessed with her now ex-boyfriend. So there is like something there and there are several men throughout the book. But the main story is really just about Queenie. Again though, if anyone has any recommendations, do let me know. Maybe I'm also just like forgetting some stuff. But I do feel like these kinds of books are a little bit difficult to find really. Like... I, obviously romance is a big part of life and all that, but sometimes if you don't like reading about it, it's hard to find books about women in that part of their life that is not about that. Then I think maybe this is gonna be like either one of the last ones or the last one. It says, I want something dark and atmospheric, historical fiction with a hint of magical realism. And... This one is also kind of hard. It has a lot of like, I've read a lot of books that has some of these things, but having it all in one book is a little bit difficult to find. But the first one that I thought of was The Strings of Murder by Oscar de Muriel, which is set in historical Edinburgh in like the late 1800s. And it's about this like detective who investigates the occult. And I feel like it's, I don't, again, my memory does not serve me that well because I don't remember if the magical, if there is actually magical realism in it or if it's just like alluded to, but it is a very dark and atmospheric historical fiction and it's also just like a really fun book. A little bit ridiculous, but just like a lot of fun. I also think that The History of Magic is a really good one, but it's not that dark. It's more like historical fiction with magical realism in it. So that could be a good one, but not like super dark. And then again, The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton is pretty dark. And it kind of fits, but it also kind of doesn't. I don't really know how to explain it without like um, spoiling the book, but I feel like it might fit. Maybe I just want everyone to read that book because it's a lot of fun, but I feel like that kind of fits, although also kind of not. <laughs> the last one that I can think of is The Diviners by Libba Bray, which is for sure historical fiction with magical realism or like fantasy elements. I guess it leans more maybe towards fantasy than magical realism. To be honest, I don't really know what the difference is and where the line <laughs> is, but that's a really good one. And at least the first one in that series is 
pretty dark. There are some chapters from like this thing that is trying to get everyone and those are pretty, pretty dark and kind of scary. <laughs> so the bread is out of the oven. It's all done and that means we've reached the end of this video. I would show you the bread, but it's like so hot that I can't touch it. But I'll insert some clips of what it looks like. It looks really good. I did make it quite a small bread. <laughs> so it's like a little bit flatter than I'm used to because it's like spread out. But that's fine. I'm still gonna eat it and it's gonna be delicious. I'm sure I've made this bread before and it was great. So I can't wait to eat it. And I think I'm gonna wait for like 10 minutes and then try to eat it and probably burn my mouth. I hope you all enjoyed this video though. I had a lot of fun making it and if any of you have any more recommendation requests do tell me and I will like note them down if I ever do this again. I feel like this is a really fun way of recommending books and also you get to like talk about a lot of books and not so much in depth but just like recommend very specific things which I think is really fun. You can also follow me on Instagram for when I ask for more recommendation requests on there maybe at some point you can just follow me there if you want to see pretty pictures of books as well i guess and yeah that's gonna be it for me today thank you very much for sticking around if you <laughs> made it all the way to the end and i will see you soon bye